two. Good afternoon. I now call to order the June 6, 2022 meeting of the Policy Review Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's Policy Review Committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams Live on the BCPS website. To conduct this meeting by virtual means, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Clark or Ms. Howie if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Clark, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Causey? Present. Dr. Hager? Present. Ms. Han? Ms. Mack? Present. Mr. Thomas? Here. Ms. Rao? Present. We have a quorum, ma'am. Thank you. Ms. Clark, please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting. Dr. Yarbrough? Present. Ms. Howie? Here. Dr. Sargent? Present. Mr. Dixit? Present. Ms. Lewis? Present. Mr. Plate? Here. Mr. Roberts? Present. Have I failed to call anybody's name? Thank you. Okay, the first item is policy 3540, Energy Conservation and Sustainability. Dr. Yarbor and Mr. Dixit, please proceed. Good afternoon, board members and BCPS staff. The Department of Facilities and Strategic Planning are here to present a proposed revisions. Here to present is Pete Dixit, Executive Director of Facilities and Strategic Planning. Turn it over at this time to Mr. Thank you, Dr. Yarbro, and good evening to everyone. Uh, policy 3540 deals with energy conservation and sustainability. It's a new policy, and as board is aware, uh, we have an active energy management and sustainability program already. But also, um, in 2021, General Assembly passed House Bill 630, requiring all LEAs to adopt or update uh, an energy policy. Policy 3540 uh, aligns with the requirement of the new legislation. A template for the policy was already provided uh, to us and it must be implemented by school year 2022-23. So here we have requesting your approval to go forward with this. If you have any questions, we'll try to answer them. Committee members, are there questions? Mr. Thomas? Yes, so I'm looking in the analysis of the board policy now where it talks about other alternatives considered by staff. It mentions the environmental sustainability um, resolution that we had, but it says that the results of that, of the work group that's going to be created, um, will affect the superintendent's rule instead of the policy. And I'm wondering, is it possible for us to, after the work group creates recommendations, to have it revisit this policy as well um, at that same time instead of just the superintendent's rule? So I would leave it up to Ms. Howie to answer that. Uh, I do not have any problem sharing the rules later on. I, it is my understanding once it is developed, it's a public document anyway. So Ms. Howie, I, I don't miss. think that was the question. I think the question from Mr. Thomas was whether or not new policy 3540 could be revisited after the committee met and if that is the direction that the committee and ultimately 
PRC and the board wish, that is certainly direction that can be uh, implemented. Right, okay, because my only concern was that, I mean, when we passed that resolution on the board, I, I think the intention was to dictate the policy and not the superintendent's rules. Um, so that I know, I know that we're in a time crunch now with this policy, so I just I, I wanted to say that. Um, another part of the resolution that was passed is it says resolved that all future replacement and our new school construction projects shall be considered for a maximum lead rating in order to achieve a net zero school status. And uh, I personally, since we passed that in our resolution, I, I think that should also be in our in our policy for this. So I am going to move to insert uh, considering all future replacement and our new school construction projects for maximum leadership in energy and environmental design lead rating or to achieve a net zero school status to line. It's actually seven of page two. Is there a second? Second, Ms. Causey. Um, are there comments? OK, um, if no one objects, this uh, amendment will be added to the policy. Thank yeah. you. Um, are there any other questions or amendments? Mr. Thomas? Yes, and I actually have one more um, amendment here. And it is that I move to insert continuing the development and implementation of conservation plans and environmentally conscious practices to line eight of page two. So that would be after the bullet that the one we just added will create. So Mr. Thomas, could you please clarify exactly where that is since we now have as well at line eight, page two, additional language. So would this be um, an E? No, this would be a 2A4. And the one prior would be a 2A3. Understood. OK, thank, thank you. you, sir. OK, are there any further uh, questions or amendments? Oh, we didn't vote on my amendment. Oh, I'm sorry. It's OK. Um, are there any objections to this language moving forward? Kathleen, I see you're typing. Does that mean you wanted to say something? Ms. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Good afternoon and thank you um, for this information. Um, I just am wondering what exactly will this in inclusion, um, how will it impact the current process of energy conservation? Ms. Rowe? Can someone answer? Yes, I can speak to that. So when I was reading this, it talks about how there's going to be a guidelines established and strategies to promote sustainable practices. Um, but I, I don't know. I just feel like what it didn't address was that continuation of those guidelines, a continual review of, of sustainability, of environmental consciousness. So with this, what I wanted to add was so continuing the development and implementation of conservation plans and environmental conscious practices. So I thought that this would, this language would imply that we're going. This is going to be continuing. Uh, it's not just going to be a. The practices that the superintendent creates aren't just going to be addressing addressing things. It's going to be a continuation over time. OK, thank you. Are there any more questions? Could I also hear from staff about their understanding of what this language will mean? Or so I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll try to explain what I understand it to be. Uh, all of our designs are energy conscious and sustainability conscious already. We try to uh, get the maximum lead rating on all um, projects. All of the projects during design stage are reviewed carefully uh, to see what is the best, uh, most optimum method to get the maximum uh, lead rating. And this is my understanding that this policy is going to reaffirm that. 
it does not mean that all the schools will have to be net zero. If it is cost effective, if it is design effective, it doesn't impact any educational program, then the intent has, has to be to get the maximum lead rating. That's my understanding. Uh, okay, thank you for that. So it would not be onerous or counter to current processes. It would uh, simply um, highlight the board's um, the board's mission for this. That's my understanding. This is to reaffirm what we are already doing. OK, thank you. All right. If there's no objections um, to this amendment language, that will move forward into the policy. Are there any objections? Are you hearing none? The amendment moves forward. Are there any further amendments? We have three minutes left for this agenda item. Uh, well. Uh, are there any? OK, go ahead, Tom, Mr. Thomas. Not an amendment, but I move to uh, require that the PRC reviews this policy after the Environmental Man Energy Management and Sustainability Work Group provides recommendations. I'm sorry, um, what are you talking about? OK, so in our environmental sustainability resolution that we had, uh, we required that the work group from the resolution would create recommendations for a board policy. Because of statute uh, and law, we have to pass this policy now. I'd like that once the work group convenes and comes up, comes up with recommendations, that this come back to PRC and is reviewed again, that policy. So when is that expected to happen? Does anyone know? As to the work group, man? Yes. I do not know. So I. OK, Julie, so say, if wait, stop. Julie, can you say that, please? Yes, thank you. I'm having Internet problems. Sorry, um, I had put in the chat a question after Ms. Causey. I thought the work group was going to recommend changes to the policy, so I just want to make sure that we are not um, putting the cart before the horse in these changes. So that was my only question about um, making these ahead of the work group, because that was my um, understanding in passing the resolution is that the work group is going to recommend the changes. So that's my only concern about these amendments. So the Ms. Holly, are we under a legal mandate to get these law changes in immediately though? The statute does require that there be um, an energy policy for each LEA in place as of July 1, 2022. OK, and so what would be the normal process for a work group to finish their work and bring this back to PRC? There would be a recommendation from the work group. So um, in terms of timing, and I think that's what Ms. Hen is um, is referring to, the policy was in the works and then the uh, the board passed the resolution while the policy was um, on your agenda for this meeting actually. So that's the reason that uh, for the insertion in the policy analysis, because staff had already prepared a draft policy for your consideration, uh, the, the board obviously had the foresight to uh, discuss and direct that there be additional work on environmental sustainability, but those were for lack of a better term, on parallel tracks. Uh, I don't know that one hand knew what the other was doing, uh, but but given the fact that the board has a resolution that is that was independent of the policy and the policy is required by state statute. OK, so there's a, the the mechanism is already there for the policy to come back to PRC then once the work group finishes. I wouldn't say that. that yeah, I wouldn't that. That because uh, you do have in the policy itself a three year review, unlike your standard 8130 seven year review. This policy must re be reviewed by law every three years. Uh, so that is independent again of the work group, the either PRC uh, or the board could um, indicate that it wanted. Uh, the work group to make recommendations to PRC 
for review of the policy, or um, as you know, today we'll be dealing with the schedule for next year, uh, PRC, the PRC schedule, you can certainly add 3540 to next year's schedule, but given the length of the schedule, I'm not sure you'll get to it, but you can certainly add it to the schedule as well. Okay, so uh, Mr. Thomas, your motion was to do what exactly? The motion was to, once the work group has recommendations, that the P the recommendations come to PRC and we th they go through the policy review process again. Okay, um, is there a second to that motion? Can I make a, 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 a no, correction? No, we're already past time. Is there a second to the motion? All right, hearing none, the motion fails for lack of second. Uh, is there any objection to this policy moving forward to first reader? It's policy 3540. Miss Rowe? No, we have to move on. Here I, is I had put something in the chat, a motion. Oh, I, I'm not seeing what you put in the chat. Um, I move to amend policy there, 3540 okay. by inserting the following language on page two, line 16. The superintendent will report on the implementation to the board at a minimum of annually. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Is there any objection to that motion moving forward? All right, hearing none, that language is added to the policy. Sir, I is do have a quick concern. Is, it's not. No, an no, we're done. We're, you can bring it up in the general meeting when we have first reader. Um, is there any objection to this policy moving forward to first reader? Ms. Rowe, I have a question yes. regarding that. I would just like to point out that not one person sent staff any questions and we're now over time on this policy. Go ahead, Ms. Causey. Thank you. Um, it is part of the meeting when, when it goes to first reader to the full board for board members to have questions and comments at that time. So um, committee members can bring motions and um, better if presented in in advance um, at that time as well. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So right Thank now you. at this time, we're either moving this policy to first reader or we're moving on to the next policy. So is there any objection to moving this on to first reader? Hearing none, policy 3540 is moved on to first reader. And our next policy is policy 7250, school building design. Um, Dr. Yarbrough and Mr. Dixit and Mr. Platt. Go ahead, gentlemen and ladies. Good afternoon again, board members and BCPS staff. The Department of Facilities and Strategic Planning are here to present proposed changes to this policy. Here to present is Pete Dixit, Executive Director of Facilities and Strategic Planning. He is joined by Meryl Plate, Director, Office of Facilities, Construction and Improvement. So thank you again, Dr. Yarbrough. The policy 7250 deals with school building design. Uh, the new policy, uh, that you see here is it aligns policy statement with board's mission, goal, and values. It updates language to allow with current practice to include replacement of and additions to existing school buildings. It complies with the state law to reduce opportunities for child sexual abuse. And it provides a hyperlink to the rule. It also complies with the latest editing conventions. There is no fiscal impact because of this policy. So your approval is requested to move it forward. Are there any amendments or questions regarding this policy? Hearing none, is there any objection to moving policy 7250 forward for first reader? Hearing none, policy 7250 is moved forward for first reader. Our next policy is new business legislative requirement, policy 5562, student registered sex offender learning options off of school property. Dr. Yarbrough, Dr. Zarshan, and Ms. Lewis, please proceed. Thank you, 
Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to present policy 5562 regarding student registered sex offender learning options off school property. April Lewis, executive director from School Safety and Security will present this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zarchin. Good afternoon, everyone. Policy 5562, student registered sex offender learning options off school property is necessary to respond to the passage of a law by the Maryland General Assembly in 2021 that prohibits individuals on a sex offender registry from entering on school system property and attending Maryland public schools. This policy is necessary to fulfill the requirements set in the MSDE model policy, student registered sex offenders on school property. With the exclusion of students from in-person learning, we must develop and communicate a policy that provides educational services, pathways to meeting graduation requirements, and plans for transitioning students once they are no longer on a sex offender registry. This policy supports the work of the system regarding student achievement as articulated in the compass, which speaks to meeting individual students' needs. Although students may have been adjudicated delinquent or found guilty of sex offenses that resulted in their placement on a sex offender registry, they are still entitled to educational programs and services that will address their academic and social emotional needs. This policy promotes the board's beliefs, precepts and values by supporting a safe and secure learning environment environment for students. It provides options for students to receive an education apart from the physical setting while considering the safety needs of other students. Enacting this policy maintains BCPS's adherence to the law that prohibits students on a sex offender registry from attending in-person school and activities as it aligns with the MSDE model policy regarding exclusion, the terminology, communication regarding services, pathways to graduation or certificate completion, and plans for transitioning students back to the public school environment. This is a new policy and builds upon policy 5561, school use of reportable offenses. With the exclusion of students from in-person learning, BCPS must make sure that the options available to students who are excluded from school system property and programs allows them to progress academically while addressing their social emotional needs in preparation for the time when they return to the public school environment. Thank you. Committee members, are there any questions or amendments to this policy? Uh, Mr. Thomas. Thank you. My only question is so because this policy will now govern our students that are registered on the sex offender uh, list, what currently what kind of what currently are the students protected by um, prior to this policy or what was the practice before we had this policy? So prior to the change in the law, mm -hmm. individuals on a registered sex offender list could attend school. Okay. In person with permission. Now they cannot attend in person. Okay, Ms. Mack, you have a question? I do. Um, what, what precipitates a student no longer being on the sex offenders registry that would allow the student to come back to school? And what is the average time frame for that to happen? That will depend on the situation, but my understanding is after they have completed probation or whatever program that they have been assigned to, the Department of Juvenile Services will determine when they are able to come off of that registry. And that's for our juvenile offenders. But is that a process that's followed with every child or every student? And if it is a process, should parts of that be included here? the form or the process that followed, the timeline? So it's not our process and not our timeline. I don't know that there is a set timeline. It will depend on the student and when they complete whatever requirements they have um, through the Department of Juvenile Services and when they are removed from that registry. Okay, thank you. 
Are there any further? Oh, Ms. Causey, you had a question? Go ahead, Ms. Causey. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rowe. Um, I was wondering if we could um, make a request for staff um, if they have already have a prepared presentation document to attach that to board docs. I appreciate um, Ms. Lewis's um, comments and it would be helpful to have those to review because it seems they were um, more extensive than what was included in the policy analysis. Is that correct? Ms. Lewis, is there a document that can be attached? I'm not aware of a document. I'll defer to Ms. Howie. I'm not sure what we would attach at this point. Ms. Howie? So staff members do prepare remarks uh, and do prepare notes, obviously, to be prepared, but there was not uh, to be able to present. There was not, um, say, a PowerPoint or another document that was specifically um, uh, prepared for uploading for the board. Is, is there additional information that the committee would need that is not in the um, in the analysis? So my my reading of the analysis, it seemed that Ms. Lewis provided additional helpful information. And would the it, is it the committee's pleasure that the analysis be updated? Yes, that, oh, that's a, that's a good idea, in my opinion. Okay. Is there any objection to updating the analysis with some of Ms. Lewis's remarks? Okay, so um, go ahead, Ms. Howie, we can do that then. Um, are there any other questions? Dr. Hager. Um, just regarding the process of that, of updating the analysis, would that prevent us from moving the, the policy forward? No. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions on this policy? Ms. Causey, did you have a question? No, it was, thank you. Okay. All right. Is there Mr. Thomas? Yes, thank you. Um, I my only question is about the anatomy of the the person, the student being on the sex offender registrant list, but then taken off. You know. What I know it's not outlined in this policy, but is it outlined in the student handbook how that would be addressed? How would other students know that the student was on the sex offender registration list? You know, a student that would be coming into the school building after they were taken off because they completed probation or training or something. Um, what kind of protections for being on the sex offender register list prior to turning to school? What kind of protections would that student have and where and what policy is that outlined? Well, that would that be Sorry. Somebody else speaking? No, go ahead, Ms. Lewis. Oh, I'm saying that would be confidential information. And so we do not share that information with other students. Um, we share information with staff who would need to know for planning purposes for transitioning. And so a part of that may be a team that would make sure that the student is able to return to school and that other students are safe in that process. So behind the scenes, they would know what they need to do to make sure that everyone remains safe. Is that something that we should outline in the policy or do you think that's something that's already in practice that is already done so there's no need to outline it? So we do safety plans for a variety of things and that would be one of the things for which a safety plan would be developed when a student is returning. Okay, that might be in the superintendent's rule then. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hen, you had a question? Thank you, I do. Um, a follow up to Mr. Thomas's question. So is it my underst is my understanding correct that students do not have access to that information of sex offenders attending their school? Not through us, not unless they found out through something in the community, but we do not share that information. We could not share that information. So we are more concerned about protecting the identity of the sex offender than with sharing potential safety information with students who do not have access to that, them providing that information. I don't think that's what staff said, um, Mrs. Hen. Uh, there are two registries. One is an adult sex offender registry, and that information is public. I mean, that's published online. There's a juvenile sex offender registry, and bluntly, not even the members of the school system have access to that. 
that is confidential and staff have uh, staff only finds out anecdotally about whether or not students are on the juvenile sex offender registry. So it's only when students are off of the sex offender registry, not under this new law or under this new law, that they would be allowed back in the school. Now that the law is has been enacted, when a student is on a registry, be it an adult registry or the juvenile registry, then the school system would be notified that that individual is a sex offender registrant. And Thank that you. adult registry is public, so students would have access to that information just as any other member of the general public. However, we can provide that information. What we have done in the past for, and I'll uh, defer to Ms. Lewis about current practice. So it's not unusual, it's, it has happened from time to time that a parent will be on a sex offender registry and that a parent would seek entrance, let's say for um, a conference. Uh, the, the statute provided that any individual who is a registered sex offender must be uh, provided permission to enter school property. And again, in the past, what was done, um, and this has not been the recent past, so again, that's why I would defer. In the past, what was done is that the, the principals were actually sent a picture as well as information about that individual who had moved into the community. And then uh, the principal would be aware. I'm, I believe I'm dating myself as to when this occurred because this was before uh, the prevalence of uh, email. And as I recall, it was before um, there was a terribly robust uh, website. So that so in the past, the information was sent directly to the school principal. Then some years later, again, um, not in the recent past, uh, that information was sent to the superintendent's designee, who at the time was uh, Ms. Lewis's predecessor. And I'm not aware um, of how that information is sent to the school system at present. So I would have to defer as to what current practice is. But I hope that begins to answer your question, ma'am. Thank you, so, ma'am, it does. And, and I guess my question, and I apologize that this is not directly relevant to the policy, although I do believe it's critical that the board understands this and discusses it, is how we are protecting our young people with this information. And while it's important to protect, you know, the privacy of these individuals, it's it's our role and responsibility to protect the safety and security um, of everyone within our building as well. So I that's why I raised this question. And Ms. Lewis, you were saying, I, I believe you had a comment. Yes, thank you. And so, yes, we do still get information about sex offenders in the community. And so we do provide that information to our administrators. Um, but in when we're talking about our juveniles, of course, that is different. With regards to what we can share. Right, with what we can share. Share. but if we well, it's even also with regard to what we receive. Right. So we do not receive in the same way that we receive adult sex offender information when individuals move into our school communities. We do not receive such notice for individuals who are on the, the juvenile sex offender registry. We simply do not receive the notice uh, prior to this statute. We were not aware of which students uh, were on the juvenile sex or sex offender registry because that registry is confidential with respect to school systems or was prior to the statute. So it's not that there's information we're withholding from the school community, it's that the information is not given to us. But I will add, when we learn that a student has been charged with a sex offense even before you know, they've been adjudicated. We do look at the situation with staff and put plans in place, especially if there is a victim in the school uh, to make sure that students are safe. So we act on what we know. There are charges. We act upon that information. When we receive information about adjudication, we act upon it at that point as well. 
but as, as Ms. Howie shared, we do not have access to the juvenile sex offender registry. Thank you for that clarification. And I would ju just want to express that when the board has latitude to share that information, that we, it's my belief, unless there are any objections, to be as transparent and as open as possible because more information is, is more security for our students. The more equipped they are with information to protect themselves, that's a position that I feel this board should absolutely take for their, their protection. Um, of course, where law prohibits us sharing, we, we certainly oblige by that, but we, we want where we have latitude to be as open with the information that we have available for our families, for our certainly for our school staff and for our students to, to provide that so that they can equip themselves and to be aware. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Hen. Ms. Causey, you had a question? Good afternoon. Thank you for uh, sharing this uh, information. So the um, policy analysis indicates that the um, policy 5562 was uh, is in alignment with MSCE's draft policy, but there is not a link to it. Can a link be provided to the MSDE model policy? We can include that in the analysis, ma'am. Thank you. And thank you. thank you. My next question uh, is a follow up. So in uh, policy, in the draft policy 5562, I do not see the word juvenile and anywhere, I, I did a control F. So it does not seem that this draft policy clarifies the distinction between a juvenile um, sex offender registry from which there is uh, more of an opportunity to have the name removed um, versus the adult sex offender registry. And I think that um, that clarification is important. And if I have missed the word juvenile, um, I. I would appreciate some clarification from staff. So this is not just for juveniles. It does also apply to a 17 year old who is charged as an adult. It would apply to them as well. They would be on the adult registry and that information would be public. The difference is if they're under a certain age, they may be on the juvenile registry and that information is not available, but it's intended to apply to both. So whether they're on the adult registry or the juvenile registry, they cannot be educated on school property. Okay, Miss Howie, can you answer a question for me? Um, so prior to this legislation, we did not know who was on the juvenile registry. Now <laughs> that this legislation requires the school system not to enroll anyone on any sex offender registry, how is that juvenile registry information going to be shared with the school system so that the school system can comply with the law? DGF, DJS rather, Department of Juvenile Services uh, will be providing us that information. Okay, and how do they provide that? Do they provide it to the law office or the school principal or Office of Safety? It's usually provided to the Office of Safety, yes. Okay, so then it's someone in the central office. Thank you. Um, are there any amendments to this policy, committee members? Mr. Thomas? Thank you, yes. Um, I'm just copying this down. Um, I move to insert, in order to maintain the highest safety and security for students, to line 35 of page two. And this is to read, create a plan for the student to transition to an appropriate public school environment when the student is no longer a sex offender registrant. Oh, sorry, not in order to, that will, sorry, instead of in order to, that will maintain the highest safety and security for students. I'm sorry, can you, can you repeat that again? Because I'm not following exactly what you're trying to do. So basically, I'm just going to read the whole entire um, thing. So basically, I would say, create a plan for the student to transition to an appropriate public school environment when the student is no longer a sex offender registrant that will maintain the highest safety and security for students. Is there a second? I'll second, second. that. 
Yeah, I second that too. Okay, is there any objection to that language being added to the policy? Hearing Ms. none. Romahe, he, Ms. Roma, he repeat the. Go Ms. ahead, repeat yeah. your motion, Mr. Thomas. So uh, it starts with the creative student. Uh, create a plan for the students in a transition that we're already in policy and my addition is that will maintain the highest safety and security for students. So just uh, what we described earlier um, was the safety plans that are, are going to be in place for this. I, I just saw that in the policy that that's where outlines where a plan will be addressed. And I just want to make sure that in our in this in the plan that we do create that it, it maintains the highest safety and security for our students in that plan as uh, students are transitioning. Um, who are no longer on the sex offender registrant or a registry, which are, whichever sex offender registry that they're on, ensuring that they are still creating, there's still going to be a safe environment for all the students. Thank you. May Mr. I request staff's um, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, opinion on I believe Ms. Kazi wanted staff's opinion on this motion. Ms. Lewis? Yes, I'm sorry. I was trying to unmute. I apologize. Um, I have no problems with adding that. That, of course, would be a part of our plan. The highest safety and security for all students, yes, would be definitely a consideration. But for example, if the victim was in the school, then they might not be returning to that school, even when they can return to in-person um, learning. So those are considerations that the team would take in, you know, would make as they were planning for the transition back to school. Thank you. Is there any objection to this language being added to the policy? Ms. Rowe, I have a follow up question. Um, I think it would be helpful. If not stated elsewhere to include the word um, employees because um, it may be that. Mm. Um, there is, you know, safety concerns. OK, so if it's addressed somewhere else in the policy, that's fine. But I would just like to understand that. Uh, Ms. Howie, is that addressed in another policy or this policy? It is not addressed in this policy, members of the committee. Is it addressed in another policy? As to um, employee safety or as to employee safety from returning sex offenders? Employee safety from focus. returning sex offenders. That is not explicit in any policy or rule to my knowledge. OK, so is there any objection to changing the language to that will maintain the highest safety and security for students and staff? Or would we use employees, Ms. Howie? What's our editing convention? There's not a convention for that term, ma'am. OK, so. Um, that's uh, there's no objection. Okay, Julie, that's a different one. OK, so all right, hearing none, that language is amended to the policy. Ms. Han, you have a motion? I do. Thank you, Ms. Rowe. Um, I move to insert the word only on line 28, page 2, to read for 3C, an individual e-learning environment accessible only to the student in a location other than school property. May I speak to my motion? Yes. Thank you. Um, to emphasize um, or differentiate the e-learning environment, as opposed to an e-learning environment that is open to other students. I'm presuming this individual e-learning environment that the meaning of that is specific to um, an individual student. However, the word only I'm proposing adding to add clarity. Oh, and, so you're you're trying to avoid having a bunch of kids in a virtual classroom with a sex offender. Correct. OK, I understand. Is there a second to this? I'll second that. OK, um, I just is there. Yes, Christian. I just, I just have a question. Sorry. So basically what I'm imagining is say it's a Google Meet and it's preventing the student that is a registered sex offender from being in the Google Meet with other students. Correct. OK. So they would have to do then, Christian, we have an e-learning thing yeah. that is more individualized than it's it's not generally used as part of our virtual learning program. OK, my one concern is then would that student also. Well, I guess they would be restricted from also. Meeting with teachers and would. 
if it's accessible only to the student? Is that the intent of with the e-learning environment or are there still meetings with teachers in the e-learning environment? They like still, there's teachers that there's teachers that facilitate the e-learning environment. But there's no like video face to face. I don't I think there is in some cases. So then there is. So then, yeah, my concern is that if we put only to the student, then. That no, would be it means not other students, Christian. It means you're not putting other students in a virtual environment with a sex offender. Well, I think I, staff tell me, is, is that what that means only that means no other students or is that meaning that it can be with only the student and not with a student and a staff member and now the student and like a teacher. If we were to add, move forward with Ms. The words and staff. If we add in staff, then I think that would. I think, and I'll, I'll let Ms. Lewis and Dr. Zarchin chime in, but I am not entirely clear that I understand what the yeah. goal is. So I think the goal is we have two different e-learning environments. We have an e-learning environment, which is a bunch of students in the same Google Meet or the same meeting room, all interacting with each other and their teacher. And then we have an e-learning environment where it is one student interacting with a teacher. And so I think the intent of Ms. Hen is to make sure that we do not have that group of students in the same virtual setting with a sex offender. Yes. And Ms. Hur, Dr. Hager had a comment and then Ms. Mack. I understand. Okay. Um, Ms. Howie, does that clarify? It does. Thank you. OK. Um. And thank you for the clarity, Ms. Rowe. Does an individual e-learning environment clarify that? We've got one person in that e-learning environment. C starts an individual e-learning environment. Yeah, an individual. That was actually e my comment as well. That was going to be my comment. Only to the student in a location other than the school. Oh. Um, so my, my motion adds it because I didn't think an individual e-learning environment was clear enough to or strong enough to um, specify that access is restricted only to um, that student and staff. So just so the um, the committee is aware, the MSDE model policy simply says virtual learning. A student who is a sex offender registrant may be educated using a virtual learning program accessible to the student within a location other than school property. And it was staff's recommendation um, that it indicate that the policy indicate individual in order to clarify what the state uh, department's model policy did not. OK. So do we need to add student and staff in a location other than school property or is that obvious? Ms. Rowe? I believe that with the technology, um, it's possible that a group Google Meet or another group virtual setting could be used to allow access to other students. So while on the surface it could seem redundant, I believe that it's it's important, not only important, it's critical that we define um, what our expectations are here, that we expect a contained or an, an something that limits access to other students as we would um, in the other environments that are specified here. OK, Home and so hospital, okay. another environment that's outside of the general sure. classroom setting. So the proposed language is an individual e-learning environment accessible only to the student in a location other than school property. Is there any objection um, to that language? Pardon me, I and we I believe Mr. Thomas added or others added and staff. So the last that's what I um, wanted to know is is there is there do we need to add and staff to the policy? I believe we do so that instructors 
can right. access the space as well. Great. So is there any objection to an individual e-learning environment accessible only to the student and staff in a location other than school property? I believe Ms. Howie um, was going to say Ms. Howie, something. did you have some? No. Okay. okay. Hearing none, that language will be um, amended to the policy. Okay, Ms. Cosley, you asked the question, but I think we already covered that as far as the difference between juvenile and adult registries, and we're past time on this. Ms. Rowe. Yes. Ms. Cosley, in in um, the understanding of time, um, I'm not making a motion, but I'm requesting that you ask the committee if there is no objection that staff could make additional clarifications and bring to first reader that uh, provide clarification that there are two separate registries, juvenile and adult, and the distinction in public access to that information, distinction in the method to be removed from those registries, and the distinction in the method of the Office of Safety receiving the registry information. So I don't think I don't see how all of that works out in a policy. But I could see how if staff were posting something concerning this on a website page, that that information could be included as other information to the public. But to, there's no, none of our policies sort of explain the world to the public, right? So um, alternatively, the public could find this meeting and watch this meeting. Um, because partly what we'd be explaining is a process that's not even our own. The Department of Juvenile Services could change its process. And we're, if we put all that process explanation within our policy, then it could very quickly end up being outdated. And they don't even necessarily, Juvenile Services isn't even consistent with one student to the next what they do. They, it's, all, it's very individualized. So I appreciate your um, comments. However, as a current board member, um, I think it's important that future board members and the public be able to look to the policy to understand that there are two separate registries, number one, and that there's certain access um, or, or limited access or no access by the public or board members, um, but there's only a very specific path in 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 the case of the, the juvenile registry. So I don't think it's going too deep into process for to understand that there's two completely different registries and that coming off the registry is a different process. Um, and okay, you know, so to clarify do that. You have, do you have language that you want to propose or are you requesting that we send this back to staff to produce language? I am requesting that staff produce language that would provide that clarity and that the committee um, provide consensus to allow those clarifications to be brought and to, to move it to first read. Okay, so those are two separate issues. Um, is there any objection to staff creating that language? So, okay. members of the committee, I'm confused as to exactly what we are amending, uh, given that uh, the model policy uh, simply men mentions one registry. I am not, I don't think there's sufficient uh, direction for staff to be able to amend without the committee's uh, further direction or language, uh, given that as has been mentioned, it's not our process, number one. Uh, number two, the model policy and the statute only mention registry. They don't uh, distinguish between the juvenile and the adult registry. And again, I'm not sure exactly what it is the committee wishes addressed. I would not want to um, indicate to the, the committee that we would make amendments and not without fully understanding which amendments and which issue the committee is trying to address. Thank you for that comment. May I, Ms. Rowe, um, respond? Um, so 
No, I think what we need to do is come back to this policy at the end of the meeting if there's still time or move it to the next PRC because we are well past our time even for the next agenda items. So, um, Miss Howie, I'm going to say that we're like, we're just going to stop right now on this agenda item and we're going to move to the next, next agenda item. And if we get done with other of these, we'll come back to this agenda item. Um, so, Ms. Hart, can I make my motion that no. was that? We'll come back to it. We're either going to come back to it at the end of the meeting or we're going to come back to it at the next PRC meeting. So, well, that, we propose, Chair, Peter, what? I don't think that's proper process. It is because we're past our time and I'm exercising the orders of the day and we have processed. We have other things we have to process, so we will come back to it. So we need, a PRC meeting. we need a motion. We're past the agenda item on the agenda. We're well past time and I'm moving forward. Proposed PRC meeting dates for 2022-2023, Ms. Howie. Thank you. Members of the committee, uh, you have before you proposed meeting dates for next year. We've included uh, based on discussions uh, with the committee leadership an additional meeting, which would be your August meeting. We do not have and have not generally scheduled meetings in January because of the budget and no meeting in April because of NSBA. Uh, there are therefore nine meetings scheduled for 22-23. Committee members, are there any objections to any of these dates? Okay, hearing none. I request that an April meeting be added. Is there any objection to adding an April meeting? Okay, hearing none, an April meeting will be added. Is there any objection to these dates, including an April meeting? Okay, hearing none, the meeting dates are approved. Um, Policy scheduled for review 2022-2023. Ms. Howie. Thank you. Members of the committee, um, Superintendent's Rule 8130 requires that annually in July the superintendent present to the board a list of those policies to be presented to the board and to be reviewed that school year. As well, Board Policy 8130 indicates that you as the board will review your policies at a minimum on a seven year cycle. What you have before you are the policies in the first band that are on the seven year cycle. There are 16 policies on the seven year cycle. What you have in the second band are those policy that policies that will be carried over from this school year, the 21-22 school year, and there are 16 policies as well. Of those 16 policies, one, 8315, is the result of litigation. I believe I gave the board um, and up or the committee an update at the last meeting. 8400, 8410, and 8420 uh, were added at the request of PRC and policies added that at the request of staff because of changes in legislation are 8360, 8362, and 8363. Uh, so with that, you have uh, potentially 32 or more policies, or might be 33, depending on the action today concerning the sex offender register policy uh, for the next school year as to what the committee will be reviewing. Um, is there any... I'm sorry. Hang on. I have an ice cream truck right outside my house. It's not. Was that Ms. Hen? Yes, it was. Thank you. With okay. regards to policy scheduled for review, um, since September, I've requested that um, the PRC take up a workplace bullying policy modeled after Montgomery County's policy. I've put a link in the chat. I've also um, emailed this to the committee and to committee leadership as well as Ms. Howie. Um, and that, that link in the chat is that. I will also provide a copy of or a link to Montgomery County's rule. I move that staff revise Montgomery County's workplace bullying policy and bring a draft for review at the next PRC meeting and for the schedule of policies for review to be updated to include a workplace bullying policy. I'm sorry, Ms. Hennig. Ms. Causey. Excuse Thank me, Ms. Causey. 
So it's been seconded. May I no, it hasn't been seconded. I haven't even received the first yet. Stop running ahead of me. Ms. Hen, can you please clarify your language? Did you mean to say the next meeting or are you requesting that this be added to the policy scheduled for review that we are considering right now? Both and Ms. Causey second in my motion. Yes, I understand that it, it, that the inappropriate time, but yes, she did. I need to understand the language of the motion. So you want this added to the 2022 schedule and you want it to be brought at the next meeting. Um, I need and Ms. Causey seconded it. I want to separate that into two questions. I would like the committee to consider having that added to the schedule and also consider whether we need to put it for the next meeting because we already have an entire slate of things at the next meeting and this is a brand new thing and we are not even getting through the things that we need to finish and we're adding a brand new thing so quickly yes thank you i believe a workplace bullying policy is important montgomery po county's policy is short and sweet i think it's a a no brainer and that once we review it it's not going to require a lot of time or con, um, to consider and it's it's straightforward it's not going to require a lot of the committee's time so if we all read montgomery county's policy and come prepared it should not require a lot of time it's not going to require a lot of staff's time to review it's a find and replace type of change that i'm asking for but it's absolutely important and it's low-hanging fruit so I am so support. this committee has not as of yet demonstrated that they're capable of passing any policy without an extensive debate so i what i want to do is just ask the committee one is there any objection to the committee pursuing this policy it just tell me if there's an objection in general to pursuing the policy Okay, no one has an objection. Is there any objection to adding it to the normal K of list of policies? Okay, there's no objection to that. Is there any objection to putting it on the next meeting's agenda? Besides me having an objection. I object. Christian, all right, Christian objects. Um, the basis of my objection is that we already have things scheduled for like the next three policy review committee meetings. Um, I don't want to add anything else to the agenda, so we're going to actually do a roll call vote on this. Um, Ms. Clark, could you do a roll call vote on adding this to the next agenda? Ms. Madam Chair, don't we have a motion already on the floor that needs to be processed? I'm processing the motion. Okay, then can it be restated, please? May I read the motion and add one quick comment? So I, I originally requested this in September. The board did um, pass an update to our bullying policy for students. This complements it and protects staff. I think it's a, as important to protect our staff as it is to protect our students um, because our staff need to look out for our students. So this complements the work that the committee's already done. Um, my motion again is I move that staff revise Montgomery County's workplace bullying policy and bring us draft for review at the next PRC meeting. Thank you. Okay. Um, so Ms. Howie, could you please explain what the impact to the items that we are likely to finish this year if we add this project for the next meeting? It will just further delay or you would have to decide what is uh, what's important to the committee and what the committee wishes to complete. Um, as I said, we have uh, at present 32 policies to complete, 16 of which uh, were not addressed this year and would have been addressed this year. And at least three of which are carryovers from the 2021 school year. I'm sorry, two of which. Okay, so Ms. Holly, what's on our next agenda that would have to be bumped? I do not have that in front of me, ma'am. Okay. Do you know how many things on our next agenda are legal mandates that we have to finish? 
if we were going to deal with the 8000 series uh, at the next agenda item, so that would be if we deal with all of the uh, ethics code policies, that would be at least four policies. OK, so we're at our time for this. Um, please don't post comments in the chat that are deliberative nature. Um, can we please do a roll call vote on adding? So I'm sorry. On I, adding to the next agenda. I apologize for interrupting, um, yes. Madam Chair. Uh, Ms. Uh, Clark has informed me that there are actually eight policies on your agenda for August at present. There's eight. OK, that's quite a bit. Um, so Ms. Hen's motion is to have staff revise Montgomery County's workplace bullying policy and bring a draft for review at the next PRC meeting. Um, can we have a roll call vote on that, vote on that please, Ms. Clark? Yes, Ms. Causey. Yes. Dr. Hager. Um, sorry, I, I, so we're voting on both adding it no, and adding just, it to the next meeting. We're just voting on adding it to the next meeting. No. Ms. Han? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Mr. Thomas? No. Ms. Rowe? No. The motion carries. It will be added to the next meeting. Um, Ms. Howley, I guess we'll discuss this at agenda setting. I no, it don't care. believe the motion carries. There's oh, it a didn't? Wait. Can someone give me the vote count, please? Three, it's 3-3, three. Three, three, ma'am. 3-3. Three, three. OK, so the motion fails. Is um, is there any objection to adding it to the list of policies scheduled for review in 2022-23? Ma'am, you'd already um, obtained unanimous consent. I mean, okay, yes. all right. So the policy will be added to the list of scheduled policies for review. Is there any objection to forwarding? Wait, we we don't forward this policies for review to first reader, do we? Miss, it doesn't go to the full board. It's just the committee processing. It goes to the full board for information at your July meeting. I see. OK, so is there any objection to passing this list as amended? Objection. Objection, Ms. Causey. I have a question about the list. OK, um, Kathleen, what's your question? Mr. Thomas can go first. Mr. Thomas. Thank you. Um, earlier when we were discussing policy 3540, did we did the motion pass? I can't recall. Um, that we would revisit it after the work group creates recommendations. Ms. Clark, can you revisit that and tell me if that passed or not? I don't believe it did. Okay. I don't I believe that, that that motion did pass. No, it failed for lack of a second. Okay. Thank you. Then I move that policy 3540 be added to the list of policies after the energy management and sustainability stakeholder work group meets and creates recommendations. OK, so you're adding it to the list. Yes. OK, is there any objection to adding policy 3540 to the list after work group recommendations? All right, hearing none, that policy will be added to the list at some point after work group recommendations. Thank you. And I, I also have something else. Go ahead. Um, I move that a policy on student engagement be developed by staff with a stakeholder work group comprised of students, community members, and staff and presented in the 2023-2023 school year, so on this list. Okay, is there any objection to adding a new policy on student engagement to, a question. to be developed by staff? Uh, yes, Dr. Hager. Um, I just would want to know kind of more about what what policies we have in place before adding a new policy and whether it aligns with the any anything that's currently on the books. Ms. Howie. Can I also speak to my motion after Ms. Howie? Move, let Ms. Howie answer the question, please, because we have something to come back to. So let's try to move quickly through these. Go so, ahead, Ms. Howie. Thank you, uh, members of the committee. I'm not sure that I'm clear on exactly what is encompassed in student engagement. Uh, so I would feel ill-equipped to speak to whether or not it's addressed, this concept is addressed elsewhere. Um, Mr. Thomas, can you please expand on what you believe this policy should do? 
Thank you. Yes. So our series 1000, our 1000 series contains community relations, and in uh, all these policies, you know, we have the policy of parent and family engagement, policy for school volunteers, visitors to schools, that educational advisory counselors, parent teacher associations, but we don't have anything that's explicitly trying to recruit and involve students in decision making in BCPS and student groups. And so with this policy, I'm hoping that we can uh, with with the draft that would be created by staff, engage our students more. We can invite them to speak at committees. We can invite them to speak in various different levels. So we have one of these policies for parent and family engagement. Um, and we didn't, as we passed that policy earlier in the year, it, nothing really included students in that policy. So I'd like to see a policy that is focusing on students and engaging students in our decision making. I think that's something that I've been advocating for this entire year. And I wanted to present this earlier in the year, but with the amount of policies we've had, I, I chose not to. And I think this is a good time for us going into next year to create a policy like this matter. Okay, Ms. Howie, um, so with that information, is what Mr. Tom is trying to do, creating a new policy or amending a different policy? So there are places in other policies where the student voice is um, is sought, uh, but there is not, as Mr. Thomas has said, a standalone. So it's it's the committee's pleasure. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Did we have a second to this already? You asked for if there are any objections. Okay. All right. Are there any objections? Ms. I'm sorry, Ms. Han, you had a comment? I have a comment, but has there been a second? No, there was no second. second. So there's I, I would second it. Dr. Aaron Hager, I would second it. Okay, thanks, okay. Dr. Hager. Um, so my comment is in response to Mr. Thomas's um, comment speaking to the motion um, in that, you know, no other stakeholder group other than students has a position on the board. We our parent group does not our um, you know the group the stakeholder groups that were mentioned in in in, in terms of how we recognize how we um, codify our our stakeholders how we give them voices we have a student member of the board and and that is in statute it's in policy it not to say we don't need a student engagement policy um, but I would want to know how this is different than what we have around our student member of the board, our student council, our um, we have policies and procedures and groups in place around student engagement. So I would like to better understand the need for this and how it would be different than what we already have in place, um, like was already mentioned. So we we do have these things for student voice. It's not the absence of those. But if um, there's a need to do more, I'm certainly open to that discussion. So one I think I don't want to get into doing is we're just deciding right now what things need to be covered in the agenda for the next year for policy review. I don't want to get into deliberating each of those things, but it sounds to me like there's a thing to be deliberated here. So that uh, maybe what we need to do is instead of having Ms. Howie add it to the schedule as specifically creating a new policy to add to the schedule for staff to research the issue and make recommendations on either updating other policies or creating a new policy and just add to the schedule for the staff to do that work and then the committee can decide at the time that staff presents that work how they want to move forward is there any objection to that idea i object idea. ms Rowe. I'm sorry. I I don't see the need for this, and I think we need further deliberation before we add it to the schedule. OK, well, so we have to process this review schedule. Um, you know what? Let's just vote on this, whether people want this on the schedule or not, because we need to move forward, and that is the only way I see of moving forward. Ms. Clark, could you take a roll call vote on, on uh, Mr. Thomas's motion? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Causey? Yes. Dr. Hager? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Uh, so, Ms. Howie, um, would you 
um, put that in the schedule as the entire review process that I suggested because I think you understood what I meant. Um, OK, so are there any more additions to the schedule? Miss Rowe? Yes. Um, I, I don't know that I'm making a motion. I'm asking for some guidance. Um, Go ahead. I would like to um, have the 5200 series um, grading uh, 5210, 5230, and 5250 added to the schedule sooner or later, sooner than later, excuse me. Okay, is there any objection to adding that policy to the schedule? It's four policies. So adding those four policies to the schedule. Okay, hearing none, Ms. Co uh, Ms. Howie, if you will add those policies to the schedule. Are there any more additions to the schedule? Ms. Rowe, I had put earlier in the chat that I had a question about the list, Go um, ahead. but mine related to um, the 5200 series. So thank you, Ms. Mack, for um, oh. bringing that up. OK, thank you. Uh, Ms. Hen, you had an addition? Yes, um, I would like to add the discipline policies that have been bumped. I didn't see them on the schedule. OK, Ms. is there any objection to adding the discipline policies to the schedule? A question? Yes. This was a request. There was a, it was on a previous agenda item in the past, right? Reviewing all of the discipline policies or. Yes, and we got through a certain portion. Miss Howie, could you give um, explain where we're at with that? Because I think that. We got stalled somewhere along the way. So I'm not sure which discipline policies the board wishes to see or the committee wishes to see. They they were on a previous committee ad, um, agenda just recently and we didn't get through the agenda and I'm not sure where they fell off because they should be. They should be in the backlog. Do you have the numbers? Not in front of me, um, but they were on the agenda for. I believe there were two of them. February or March. There were. Um, I can look up the numbers before. So is it 5550 and 5560? Yes, ma'am. And I believe there was a related policy that you recommended the committee also review. Straining my memory, I will take your um, take your word for it, ma'am. And I do believe there was a there were there was a request based on uh, work group recommendations, if I'm remembering correctly, but I would I would hesitate to speak. OK, so any objection to adding those policies to the list? Miss right. Rowe, uh, Miss Rowe, to stop interrupting me. Well, you're asking I, I have an objection. Oh, OK, thank you. What is your objection to adding those to the list? I'm not sure that that's the correct policy because when I look at 5550, it was last updated on 6-11-19, so I don't know if that is the policy. Ms. Howie? That is one of our discipline policies. So uh, again, uh, I can check past agendas to make sure that's the right number. If there was one that was overlooked, uh, but 55-50 and 55-60 are our discipline policies. So I would just like to state now for the benefit of the committee that all of you had the opportunity to present your questions and things to staff and every one of these additions to the list could have been added to the list in an email to staff because we are not going to finish our agenda today because people did not prepare ahead of time and do what they were supposed to do. Um, and we are going to end this meeting at six. Ms. Ms. Rose, Ms. What would you like to add to the list? The policies were 5550 and 5560. Those are the correct policies. OK. Um, and there's no objection to adding to those to the list? None. OK, Ms. Howie, will you please add those to the list? Ms. Causey, what policy number would you like added to the list? Madam uh, Chair, I move policy 2310 administration, administrative operations be added to this list in order to update given the public works recommendations. Is there any objection to moving policy 2310 to the list? OK, hearing none, it's added to the list. Are there any more additions of policies to the list? 
Is there any objection to approving the list as amended? Hearing none, the list is approved as amended. Um, pol uh, D, Policy Editing Conventions 2022-2023, Ms. Howie. Thank you, members of the committee. You have before you the editing conventions. As I've said on several occasions, uh, these were implemented so that the policies as well as the policy analyses that are sent to you are in a standard format. The only question that I have for you has to do with what former board member Steve Virch um, hated, which is the Oxford comma, uh, and uh, that uh, based on the uh, the manual of uh, concerning correspondence for the rest of the system, there is an Oxford comma, but there is not in your editing conventions. We could call it the Virch comma, actually. Uh, so that's the only question. Staff do um, tend to get confused because in every other piece of correspondence, there is an Oxford comma, there is not one here. So that's the only question as to whether or not the board wishes, committee wishes to continue that. So I have no idea what even an Oxford comma is, and I really don't care, but it looks like the majority of the committee wants to have Oxford commas. Is there any objection to having Oxford commas since the rest of the school system uses Oxford commas? Hearing no objection, we will use Oxford commas. Okay, moving on to E. Actually, you know what? Excuse um, me, Matt. Here. What? This Seriously, is you have a question about editing convention? Okay, go ahead. Editing convention question, go. Thank you. In the second paragraph, it says in the 8000 series internal board operations, policies are understood as tools to establish concrete approaches and mechanisms for self governance of the board. I would suggest that the mechanisms are for the board's governance of the school system. Um, and if there's other committee members that agree, um, maybe I don't need to make a motion. So, so the are, 8, just, go ahead, Ms. Howie. So the 8000 series are your policies about you. It, for lack of a better term, they're your navel gazing. They're how the board decides to proceed and how the board operates internally. Some of them do have an impact on system operations, but mostly it's it's the board. So how the board evaluates its superintendent, how the board evaluates itself. Uh, those have to do with your operations, your Office of Internal Audit, for example. Those don't have direct impact on the school system, but it is the committee's pleasure. Well, I would certainly hope that our um, self evaluations and superintendent evaluations do impact the school system, and I would hope that our Office of Internal Audit is doing work that does impact the school. Okay, <laughs> so this is a conversation about editing conventions. Do you are you making a motion to change language? Yes, I move. Okay. We change the language. Do you want me to say it? I'll just type it. While Ms. Kelsey is typing, I just want to thank Ms. Rowe for the continuing to try to make our meetings faster and the measure, steps she's taking. So thank you. Ms. I'm Rowe. just trying to get through the number of policies we pass because as evidenced by our list, we are half a year's policies behind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're not progressing any faster. But thank you, Mr. Thomas. I move to amend the editing convention document, second paragraph to state for the board's governance of itself and the school system. Is there a second? Hearing none, the motion fails for lack of second. I'll second it. 
I was okay, trying to so there's a second. Um, is there any objection to adding this language for the board's governance of itself and the school system? I have a question. Yes, Mr. Thomas. So that's going to replace for self governance of the board. Yes. OK. No objection. OK, hearing no objection, the language is amended. Um, is there any objection to approving the policy editing conventions for 2022-2023? Hearing none, the editing conventions are approved. Um, Ms. Howie, do you think that it would be more appropriate to process appeals hearings and handbooks at this time or try to go back and move the legislative requirement of policy 5562 forward in the next three minutes we have? 5562, ma'am, the questions and answers on hearings and appeals um, can stand until you replace them, but 5562 okay. requires your attention. So back to 5562. I have a motion on 5562, Ms. Rowe. Yes, please put your motion in the chat. It's in the chat at 524. I move to insert. Go and, ahead. I move to insert and school families on line 38, page two to read. The Office of School Safety shall notify law enforcement and school families if a student sex offender violates this policy by entering school property. So, Ms. Howie, can you recommend if that's a legal motion considering juvenile sex offenders? Because I'm not sure we can notify families of anything a juvenile does that may break any policy. Like, I'd like to know if this motion is legal before I even ask for a second. I am not sure whether or not we have the authority to do so. Okay, so this, um, this um, motion requires considerably more legal research. And that presents a problem because we have a legislative requirement to pass this policy. Does the committee want to send this back and be late on our legislative requirement and have staff further research this or can we send it to first reader and make further amendments in first reader? Question of Ms. Howie on my motion. Yes. Um, Go ahead, Ms. Hen. Ms. Howie, is there a, a recommendation you would make that would um, clarify this motion to address your concern, or could you elaborate on your concern? If this. So if the uh, if the what this is doing uh, is letting members of the public know that someone is on the juvenile sex offender registry, then we have violated uh, that individual's confidentiality if we are releasing that information to the public. And I don't know that we have the authority to do so. We have the authority to tell law enforcement because they can enforce uh, the, uh, the mandate, but telling families is, I believe, beyond our authority. So, ma'am, if we do not have the authority to notify families a sex offender was on school property today, if you talk to your students and say, is there, did anything unusual happen at school today, to be to have the co courageous conversations with their children to be on alert that this happened without identifying without identifying anyone by name or releasing any confidential information to give them an alert without releasing any personally identifiable information. Understood, but that's not what this says. It says if a student sex offender violates this policy by entering school property, the Office of School Safety shall notify law enforcement and school families. It does not specify what we are telling school families. That messaging could be defined in the rule. It doesn't state that we are releasing anyone's identity or information. It just says, hey, this is notice to let you know, for instance, an alert that um, there's a, a sex offender that has moved into your, your neighborhood. When the adult sex offender registry is updated, an alert okay. is, is issued. I'm just, I'm just gonna um, interrupt quickly and ask, is there anyone 
currently here, they cannot stay for an additional 15 minutes to wrap up this policy. No objection to extending the meeting by 15 minutes. Okay, we will extend the meeting to 615 to try to finish this policy. Um, Ms. Rowe, this is that, Ms. Palsy. Yes? I would like to second Ms. Hen's motion because I believe as she stated, the process to uh, to um, make sure that the notification is legal is up to the superintendent and staff, but the decision of the board to allow families to know information, we do that regularly now. There was a lockdown, there was a lockout, there was a situation of safety related to a student with a knife. So there are a number of safety messages that are distributed to families in compliance with student privacy and other laws. So I would like to second Ms. Hen's motion. Okay, so the motion is um, made and seconded. Is there any objection to this language being added to the policy? I, I object. I, Mr. Thomas objects. Can I please? Go ahead. Or, okay, thank you. I just, I, I agree that we should, like, like, it, like what Ms. Causey said, that when there's a notification of a lockout, we do, yes, I think we should do the same thing with the sex offender, but I, I worry, so I, mine is just, should I say families or say school communities? I think maybe school communities might be more appropriate than families, just because that would, I don't, I don't really know. Maybe school, family might be fine, but I think communities might be better. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. I, I considered school communities and was wondering if that was too broad, but that, I agree with that wording. And would accept that, I would change the wording for that. And if, if, there's if there's no objection to changing it from families to communities. OK, the language is changed from families to communities. No, no. For the motion. What? For the motion. Dr. No. Hager, no, we're still <laughs> we're still we're still considering the entire amendment. It's just we're not approved. We haven't approved the amendment. I'm just Dr. Hager, you had something to say, so go ahead and say it. Yeah, I just um, uh, and Miss Howie, maybe you can answer this. I, I get the impression that this is a uh, this is a, um, sorry, a, a policy to support the learning of the student who is the sex offender. And there, it, I would imagine, is likely a case where the individual school, the homeschool of that child might not even know why they are not attending that school. I, I, I still don't, I think there's like a level of privacy that we're not considering here. Does that make sense? Th this is, and I feel like by putting this language into this policy, we are implying that everyone knows who this who this these children are and also maybe maybe supporting a, a sense that the community is going to know when people might not know sorry i'm not making a lot of sense because i'm trying to wrap my head around this sense. go ahead yeah so it's um i i just i think this is a this is about education learning options and i think we're maybe straying a little bit here so for myself personally, I agree with that because if there's somebody who's on the juvenile sex offender list, m most of the people in the school, including a good portion of school staff, may not even realize that's the case, in which case the school system may not even necessarily realize a violation has occurred. And so, so many things would have to fall into place to comply with this, that there are a lot of situations in which you you can't comply that a student has violated this policy and it seems to me that this policy does apply the policy applies to the school system providing education for the student who's on the list how is the student going to violate this policy like what the fact that the student can't enter school property is a matter of state law they'd be violating the state law so and the school system's already obligated, if it's aware, to report that stuff. So I guess my, I, this is just messy. This should have been sent in an email to be hashed out and it wasn't. So and I'd like to move this policy forward. So let's just vote on this amendment. Ms. Rowe? Yes. Um, the concern, it sounds as if the concern of the committee is the disclosure of the identity of the student sex offender. Um, I'd like to modify my amendment to insert the sentence, the, the identity of the 
sex offenders shall not be disclosed other than to law enforcement um, following the text that is currently in the policy so that the section reads the office of school safety shall notify law enforcement and school families if a student sex offender violates this policy by entering school property the identity of the student sex offender shall not be disclosed other than to law enforcement and the example of the notifications that someone mentioned um i believe it was mrs causey was exactly the intent of this to provide families or the community thank you mr thomas um with a heads up that that this occurred as an informational bulletin thank you um does anyone object to the new language this is miss causey and as a second i wanted to comment on that go ahead so i um i seconded uh the original motion and i believe that the amended motion which says the office of school safety shall notify law enforcement and school community if a student sex offender violates this policy by entering school property i think that we can vote on that addition and then in in the interest of time have staff come back to us and indicate whether school communities or families would be the better word um and i don't agree with julie hen's latest uh the identity of the student sex offender shall not be disclosed other than to law enforcement because the office of school safety they have a notification process and that's getting to that's putting in a statement that really goes to process and and so i just think that that's not appropriate and that staff knows that they're not supposed to identify uh student names under most circumstances they know what that that is that their administration i think this entire thing is half-baked and i'm not supporting any of it because it needed more research it needed more thought and um, I think the school system is probably going to already inform law enforcement if they're aware of a legal violation. But this is something so I mean, that's how I'm going to vote. So now we have a motion that had a second, an amendment to the motion that doesn't have a second. Does someone uh, want to second Julie's uh, changes? Right. To read the motion again. Sure. OK. Um, and sorry, Mr. Thomas, I pasted in the wrong version of the motion without your, your word change. Um, the Office of School Safety shall notify law enforcement and school communities if a student sex offender violates this policy by entering school property. The identity of the student sex offender shall not be disclosed to school communities. So rather than stating to address Mrs. Causey's concern without restating the technicalities of disclosure, this wording specifically states um, that the information shared with school communities shall not include the disclosure of the identity of this um, student sex offender. Okay, so this is a motion to amend the language of the first motion. Is there, there is an objection, so let's vote on it. Can we, we're voting on. Ms. Rowe, motion. I need a clarification, please. Yes. I believe this language should be in a policy, but to Dr. Hager's point, I I didn't consider it from the perspective that this is about educating our requirement to educate a sex offender. So my question for Ms. Howie is, do we have a policy where we explicitly state that if a sex offender is in one of our schools, we notify families? Because in the absence of that, if there is not a policy, Although I don't know that this really goes here, I would support this because I do think it needs to be stated. Oh, there I'm is sorry. Not. There is so not. The, the law previously provided, as Ms. Lewis stated, that if uh, a registered sex offender sought, who was a student sought permission that to enter school grounds, he or she could, as well as anyone on the sex offender registry. 
So uh, it's it has not been in law previously. The current requirement that we've tried to embody in 5562 is about those students who are sex offender or sex registrants and making sure that educational services are provided to them in a way that is safe uh, to members of um, our school communities. And that means that they're not allowed on school grounds and they're not allowed to enter school property. That is explicit in the statute. It was not prior to um, to the legislative session. OK, so in the absence of anything that clearly states this, I would support this. OK, so. Um, we need to process just part of this because right now it's unclear what we're even actually deliberating on. So Ms. Hen made a motion. Ms. Kazi seconded it and then Ms. Hen. Moved to alter the wording of her motion, which in effect is an amendment to the motion. Is there a second to the alteration, the amendment of Ms. Hen's new wording? Second, Ms. Causey. OK, Ms. Causey seconds that. Is there any objection to changing the wording of the original motion to Ms. Hen's new wording? We're not passing it right now, right? We're just no, we're just changing the word. OK, so. The wording is changed, hearing no objection. So the motion on the floor is move to insert and school communities on line 38, page two to read. The Office of School Safety shall notify law enforcement and school communities if a student sex offender violates this policy by entering school property. The identity of the student sex offender shall not be disclosed to schools communities. So that's what we're deliberating on. Are there any other comments on that? Mr. Thomas. Thank you. Yes, uh, one as I this has been reposted so many times and I've been reading it over and over again. I'm not saying that it only says the identity of the student sex event. It only talks about student sex offenders and we're only going to be notifying a community for that matter. So I mean that could be changed, but even if that was changed based on Dr. Hager's comment about um, the relevance to this policy, I, I have to agree with Dr. Hager on this, so I, I will be voting no. But that's another change that I, I think is needed. I would love to see staff review this and pre present you know, where this would be most appropriate. I agree that this okay. language needs to be somewhere. I just don't know if here's the best place. Ms. Rowe, Ms. Rowe can I ask a question of Mr. Go ahead, Ms. Han. For clarity, um, Mr. Yes, Thomas, are you saying that the word community should be singular? I, I missed your suggestion. Oh, the but just that, that it, we're only talking about student sex offenders right here, and I guess it's because we're under the student section, um, but Correct. Why aren't we? No, why aren't we notifying? Like, I think sex there's a better policy somewhere that we can notify communities yes. when there's a sex offender in general, and I think that's something that we should also be doing that. So I think that there's probably another policy where that's more relevant. And Dr. Hager's point about this being about presenting educational learning options, it isn't the right place, and I think it's necessary. And we need to quickly figure out where that right place is. But I, I don't want us to do this without having our our legal team review it. Ms. Howie, is there any place in policy or rule that requires that the community be notified if a sex offender has been on school property? There is not. Is there an, a policy where that would best fit better than this one? I would have to think about that and I would also defer to Ms. Lewis as to the way the practice uh, works currently when there's a sex offender who is an adult sex offender, let's say a parent uh, or, so, or guardian who wishes to come to a uh, school event or meet with the teacher. Uh, that individual does need the permission of the principal, but I don't recall that in past years we notified uh, parents uh, when a sex offender had permission, we did in years past uh, keep a book in um, the front office of all the sex offenders who were in that particular neighborhood. Again, I'm dating myself as to uh, when this occurred, but or how long ago this occurred. I'm not sure what the schools do at present. And again, would defer to Dr. Zarchin and Ms. Lewis. 
So is there, does the current law as it's currently passed prevent any student on the registry from entering school property at all? Like my understanding is the law is that the school system no longer has the ability to grant permission. It's just banned. So there is no situation where a sex offender <coughs> on the list would be on our property because they are allowed to. So we're talking two different groups. We're talking about uh, adults who are sex offenders who are not our students. Those individuals are not covered by the statute. Those who are on the sex offender registry, be they on the adult registry or the juvenile registry, but who are our students, who are enrolled as students, are covered by this policy and by the statute. And does that statute allow any exceptions for entering school property? On it does not. Discretion of this, okay. So no matter what or how a person got on the list, whether they're a student or not a student, they're not allowed on school property for any reason. So is there some place else in policy besides this policy that deals with school access or something like that where we can state sex offenders are not allowed on school property for any reason and the community will be notified if this happens? There could be something in the 3000 series um, because there is, there are facilities policies in the 3000 series, I believe it's 3200. Um, there, there could be something about uh, access to school grounds. Okay, so maybe the access to school grounds and notification, it's a better place there than here. If we're talking about any sex offender, um, again, this policy would only address those who are our students who are also uh, registered sex offenders, whether they be on the adult registry or the juvenile registry. I mean, as a parent, I'd like to know about anybody. Uh, Ms. Rose, I may I? Go ahead, Ms. Fuzzy. Thank you. Um, I appreciate Dr. Hager's comments and also um, follow up with um, Mr. Thomas. I strongly support Ms. Hen's uh, a motion as amended and would just um, remind everyone that this law came into being because there was a concern, a grave concern about student safety in schools uh, with registered sex offenders also being in the schools. So this state law is about student safety but we also, it was also about making sure that those students still need to be educated, with which I strongly agree. But I think this is the place because this state law is um, to make sure that students get their required education, but also that students and families feel safer about what the process is. Also, if we vote and say yes to this, and if staff has concerns, they can bring that forward at first reader for our edification at first reader, but at least we'll have it at first reader with this uh, amendment, in my opinion. And then if further edits need to be made, we can make it at first reader. So with that, I'm gonna move the question. Um, okay, and we have, okay, so we're gonna vote now on the, move to insert and school communities on line 38 page 2 to read the office of school safety shall notify enforcement law yes. enforcement and school communities if a student yes. sex offender violates this policy by entering school property the identity of the student sex offender shall not be disclosed to school communities Ms. Clark will you call the roll on this yes Ms. Causey yes Dr. Hager no Ms. Han Yes. Ms. Mann. Yes. Mr. Thomas. No. Ms. Rowe. Yes, the language moves forward. Is there any objection to moving this policy to first reader as amended? Okay, hearing none, policy 5562 is moved forward to first reader as amended. 
So, okay, so go ahead, Ms. Holly. Members of the committee, it's my understanding then that the um, hearings handbook will be returned to you for uh, for action. And I would just ask, uh, while I don't get personal privilege because I'm not a member of the assembly, just want to make sure that I recognize and acknowledge um, my coworker of more than 20 years, Ms. Clark. This is her last PRC meeting because she is retiring oh. from the school system as of June 30th. Um, she and I have been through quite a lot together. Uh, some people call her my right hand. Uh, she's also my right shoulder and my side, uh, one of my sidekicks because she's been here, as I said, for more than 20 years. So I hope you'll join me in wishing her well uh, and being grandma from now on. <laughs> well, congratulations, Ms. Clark, but we're going to miss you and I don't know what we're going to do without you. Hey, Ms. Clark, everybody. I can tell you there's nothing like being grandma. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I just would like to, uh, Thank Ms. Clark so much for all your support and your hard work. It's really been a tremendous amount of uh, impact that you've had on the school system and, and in assistance to the board. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, so with that, I'm going to move down to announcements. The next policy review committee meeting, Tuesday, August 16, 2022, is at 4.30 p.m. And I will see all of you when I return from Spain. Have a nice time. <laughs> I know you, I get all it's going to be great so enjoy Lily it's going to be fun I'm taking my baby girl have a nice trip good evening board members